This is a demonstration of how to use the BLHeli pass through configuration feature with the uh, new ArduPilot Shibios builds. And uh, these are, are experimental builds at this stage, but it's expected to be in the, uh, the next major release. Um, what I've got is a Pixhawk 2.1 cube with four BLHeli 32 ESCs attached and running the Shibios build of ArduCopter. And I'll just show you some of the key configuration settings and then I'll show you how to use it. So I'm gonna go into configuration and tuning. And first of all, I'm going to have a look at the, um, uh, the motor settings. And uh, you can see that I've got MOT PWM type set to four, which is the setting for DSHOT 150. So I'm using uh, the DSHOT protocol to talk to the ESCs. You don't have to actually use DSHOT um, along with the, uh, when you're doing BL Heli pass through configuration, but it is recommended. Um, and uh, the next thing I'm going to have a look at in the settings is um, because this is a, uh, a Pixhawk 2.1 cube, it has a total of uh, 14 uh, servo outputs. It's got eight what are called main outputs and six auxiliary outputs. And right now we can only support um, the, both the DSHOT protocol and BLHeli pass-through on the auxiliary outputs that are directly attached to the SDM32 main uh, microcontroller. And so I've got my servo 9 function here set to 33. So I've set servo 9, which is the first auxiliary channel, to 33, which means motor 1. And then similarly, I have got a servo 10 function, uh, if I can type it, set to 34. So I've got my servo 9, 10, 11, and 12 set to 33, 34, 35, and 36. That's only needed because I'm running a Pixhawk 2.1 cube with main and auxiliary outputs. If you were on something like a Pix Racer, then uh, you wouldn't need to do those special settings because all of the six uh, outputs on a Pix Racer are able to do both DSHOT and the BL Heli pass through. Uh, in future, we hope to support um, these protocols on the main outputs of a Pixhawk 2, but they aren't supported at the moment. All right, so now we've got those main settings, we're going to go into the BL Heli settings. So if you search for BLH um, in the uh, parameter list, you'll notice that there is these six parameters that are settable related to the BL Heli protocol. Now, if you don't see these parameters, then it means your firmware does not support the BL Heli protocol. You're either not running the right um, build of, of Shubios uh, firmware, or um, you have a board that, that doesn't support it. And um, the key parameter here is to set the servo BLH auto. That says to do automatic mapping of the, um, the vertical motors uh, for the copter to the um, BLHeli ESC numbers. Uh, BLHeli protocol supports up to eight ESCs. Um, it, the ArduPilot needs to know how to map those eight ESC numbers in BLHeli down to the, out, the 14 possible outputs you can have on, a, on an ArduPilot board. And so uh, by setting it to auto, that means it just uses the first four ESCs from your um, normal multi-copter motor outputs. And similarly, if it was a quad plane and we were running the IG plane firmware, then setting it to auto would mean it would automatically select all of your vertical motors, uh, your vertical lift motors on a quad plane. All right, now we've set that. Uh, and once you've set that, you don't actually need to reboot. Um, we're just gonna back, go back to flight data here and I'll just point out one slightly unusual configuration. I'm connected here over a telemetry uh, port to uh, a serial telemetry port, not over the USB. And uh, you can do all of that set up over USB. But if you do do the setup over USB, then you would have to disconnect your ground station, for example, Mission Planner, before you connect to BL Heli 32, because they can't both be using the USB port at the same time. And so now I'm going to be starting the BL Heli Suite 32, um, and you're going to, we're going to connect it over USB to ArduPilot, and it has to be on the USB port. We don't currently support the BL Heli pass-through protocol on anything other than the first first port on uh, ArduPilot, which is the usually a USB port. 
Uh, now the choice of version of BL Heli Suite, if you're running BL Heli 32 ESCs, you need to use BL Heli Suite 32. If you're running the older BL Heli S ESCs or the older Atmel BL Heli ESCs, then you would have to use the 16-bit version of this suite. Okay, so now we've, we've got all that out of the way, we're going to select the USB port that the Pixhawk is connected on and click the connect button. And that is now connected into the ArduPilot and it says multiple ESC just because it's a multiple ESC protocol. Even if you only had one motor attached, you would still see multiple ESC turning up there. I'm now going to click the read setup button. What that's done is now asked ArduPilot to query all of the speed controllers that are attached to it. And it's found four speed controllers and it's found the firmware version of BL Heli and it's identified them as Siskin ST32 Plus ESCs. They're actually uh, Multistar 51 amps, which is a variant of the Siskin ESC. All right, so we're now connected to those four ESCs and we can have a look at the settings we have and the LED settings, all of the beacons, the maximum throttle, all of these settings. I recommend you read the uh, operation manual for BL Heli 32 to learn all about these settings. The main thing you want to check is that all of your ESCs have the same settings. So I'm going to go to the ESC overview and I can see that my four ESCs all have the same firmware version and they all have the same settings here in every column. If one of them had a different setting, it would be highlighted in blue. So I'll just demonstrate that. Let's connect just to the first ESC and I'm going to set a small beacon delay and then I'm going to um, write that setting. And so that's now written that to the first ESC. If I go to these, then you can see that this one has a five second beacon delay and all of the others have no, no beacon delay. And so we can now see that some of our ESCs have different settings from the other. The beacon delay isn't particularly critical, but for some of the other settings, you really want things like the timing uh, same on all of your motors. And what I'm going to do now is go to my second ESC and copy its settings, go back to my first ESC and paste in those settings, and then write the settings to that ESC. So that ESC now has the correct settings again, we have the same settings on all ESCs. All right, so um, uh, that's an example of uh, how to configure uh, your ESCs and you can use that to change all of the settings or to double check the settings on your ESC. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is show firmware flashing and we can see at the moment they all have the same firmware version. What I'm going to do is downgrade one of my ESCs to an earlier firmware. So I'm going to pick the fourth ESC here and then I'm going to say to flash BL Heli and it's now got to talk to the servers and I'm going to select a older firmware version and tell it to flash that older firmware version to this ESC. And now it's flashing the firmware. So this flashing is going via the USB port into the Pixhawk 2.1, which is then sending the data out the normal servo lead connectors to the ESC and reprogramming the ESC with the older firmware. It's now verifying it. Nearly there. Great, we've now uh, we've downgraded the firmware on that ESC, which is not normally um, what you would want to do. I've also written the new the settings to that ESC after changing the firmware. And if we have a look at ESC version, we can now see that this one is running an older version of the firmware. Um, that's not what you would normally do, but it just demonstrates how you would change firmware versions on your ESCs. All right, so that's the, that's the main features. I'm now going to show you a bit about debugging. Um, this feature of BL Heli Pass Through is a very new feature and um, uh, we still want lots of people to test it, which is partly why I'm making this video. And uh, when you are testing it, you may find that it doesn't work with your particular ESCs, in which case I'm going to show you a bit of how to debug it and uh, to provide useful information back to myself and the other developers so we can help you sort out any issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect here. Uh, from the um, from the interface and I'm going to go back 
I'm connected here over a telemetry interface. It could be a telemetry radio, or it could be a direct serial link. It's probably easiest using a telemetry radio. And I'm going to go to the BLH settings again. I'm going to turn on the debug option. So turning on, I'm going to write that parameter. So turning on the debug option will mean that you'll get verbose information on the BLHeli pass-through protocol coming across the telemetry link. So I'm now going to go to the flight data screen and to the on in mission plan, I go to the messages tab. Uh, and while I've um, got the messages tab up, I'm going to click the connect button here in Bill Heli Suite. And what you can see here is we got some verbose output showing us all of the operations that are going on, um, all of the individual BL Heli operations as the um, a BL Heli Suite program is talking to the ESCs via ArduPilot. So now I'm going to do the read setup to read the, uh, the setup of each ESC and we can see all of the information that is coming through there uh, about the, the different flash addresses. That information probably won't mean an awful lot to you, but it'll be very valuable um, uh, to the developers to work out what's going wrong with your ESC. And all of this information will appear in your telemetry log, your T log. Uh, it'll also appear in a data flash log if you have log disarmed set to true. But I'd recommend just using the T log uh, that Mission Planner always saves. So if you are getting problems, then uh, enable that debug option and then get a telemetry log. And so what I'm going to do now as a final step is I'm going to go back and upgrade this firmware back to the current firmware and we'll watch what happens in the telemetry while it's doing that. And we will start flashing that firmware. And what we're seeing here is it flashing each block. So it's flashing 256 bytes at a time uh, on this, uh, this one. So we can to move Mission Planner across a bit and we'll be able to see that window. And you can see as it's flashing each block, it's getting acknowledgements back and confirming that the block has got through correctly. And that's the sort of information that we need to be able to see when debugging this, uh, this support for this protocol. All right, so that's done. And I have now got my ESCs back uh, in the correct arrangement. And if I go to my ESC overview, you can see that I'm clear to fly now. All the ESCs look good. Uh, one final thing I'll show you um, is the motors interface. This is quite useful for testing motors. It's um, uh, somewhat similar, but perhaps a little more flexible than the Mission Planner motor test. And this allows you to run up individual motors. So what I'm going to do is click that to say that I understand the risks. And you really should only be doing this with your uh, propellers off. In fact, this entire test that I've been showing you here should be done with the propellers removed. Uh, this is very new code. Uh, and if something went wrong, I don't want somebody to be injured. So really make sure you do remove your propellers. So what I'm going to do now is run up my ESCs to different uh, speeds. I can control each of the ESCs and they should run smoothly. This allows you to uh, rapidly check if your ESCs and motors are behaving correctly. You can also push up globally to push all of the motors to the same value like that. All right, and then I will disconnect again and I am back. Now, one final thing I'll mention is if you are connected here, then the USB port on the Pixhawk or on the uh, your flight board for ArduPilot will be controlled by BL Heli Suite. So if you tried to connect on that USB port using a ground station before disconnecting BL Heli Suite, it won't work. And that's because the USB port is occupied. Even if you, un, uh, you know, unplugged that and plugged it back in, if, if the board remained powered, you would still wouldn't be able to connect. So just please remember that, you know, um, you can do all you like inside this tool, connect things, uh, you know, check all your settings, but please remember to press disconnect at the end and that will release the, um, uh, that will then release the serial port and in the debugging at the bottom, it'll actually say that it's released it. Um, and that will then enable you to connect on that same USB port with your normal ground station. So I hope this has been useful in showing you the capabilities of Bill Heli pass-through support in ArduPilot. And um, 
please uh, join the Shibios Gitter channel uh, on the uh, Arduipilot um, uh, Gitter, so gitter.im slash Arduipilot slash Shibios, if you want to discuss the, this feature with any of the developers. Thank you and uh, happy flying.